Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Carl D'Souza. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Power Platform TV. Today, we're going to take a look at how to use Microsoft Power Automate to get the version of a Power Platform Common Data Service database so that we can use that to determine whether we have new features installed or what version we're on. So one of the new features that is coming out is the ability to query the common data service using uh, T-SQL, okay? So from SQL Server Management Studio, being able to connect directly to a common data service database and then being able to write T-SQL queries against that data, okay, without any kind of intermediary. So uh, it's a very cool feature, and uh, it's unfortunately not available to everybody yet. You know, it's kind of frustrating, right, when you hear these new features that are coming out, and you're like, okay, I really want to try this, and then you go to your org, and then you see that this feature is not yet enabled, right? <laughs> so it happens to me all the time. Um, and, you know, this, so I was thinking like, well, rather than kind of waiting for this feature to be available, by going into the org and refreshing uh, the versions every time to see what version I'm on, um, you know, maybe I should just write an app to tell me when it's ready, okay? Obviously, this is uh, very universal, so anytime a new feature comes out, you could run this and you could, uh, you know, it'll tell you uh, when the version of Dynamics uh, or the Common Data Service is available and then you'll have that new feature. So let's take a look at it. Um, so if I go over to this link over here on the Microsoft website, this is actually the uh, instructions that will uh, enable the, uh, the SQL preview, okay? Um, and uh, you can see here, this is viewing uh, entity data in Power BI Desktop, right? So there's a bunch of prerequisites that you need to go through, and one of those prerequisites is verify that your environment has at least version 9.1.0.17.437, okay? So we're going to write a Power Automate flow that will tell us exactly what this version is, and then we're going to get an alert uh, every day based on what this is, and then we'll know uh, whether we have the new features or not. Okay. So uh, in order to do this, uh, firstly, I'm going to go over to my Dynamics org, and this is running on the Common Data Service. And if I go up here into the About area, we can see that the uh, version uh, that I'm on is 9.1.17.162, okay? So um, that is the version I'm on, and I want to be at that higher version, okay? So at this point, I don't have those features enabled. So let's go ahead and click OK here. And what we'll do is we'll head over to uh, Power Automate, and we're going to create this new uh, Power Automate flow, okay? So... I'm going to run this on a schedule. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to my flows here and we'll run this every day. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to click new flow and it's going to be a scheduled from blank and let's give this a name. So the name of this flow is going to be a uh, check power platform version number, let's say. Okay. So uh, it's going to run every day at 10 AM. Uh, we're going to repeat this every day because I want to know every day whether this version is increased or not, okay? So now I'm going to click Create, and we have this uh, blank flow that's created, okay? So um, we have the, the recurrence here. That's all good. Um, so what we want to do, first thing we want to do is we want to connect up to the uh, web API for the common data service platform that I am running, right? So that's going to be the first step here, to go and authenticate uh, to that web API. So in order to do that, there's a couple of things that we'll need to do. Um, and one of the first things we're going to do actually is we're going to go into the um, the app that we have created for the uh, for this org and we'll just make sure that it, that's set up correctly. All right. So to do that, I'm going to go over here and go over to uh, portal.azure.com and let's take a look at the app. And so if we go over to uh, Azure Active Directory. So I went through this in a previous video that I'll 
uh, add to the links. But um, basically, this part, we uh, in a previous video, we created an app, and then we were able to connect to it through Postman. So uh, I'm going to use the same app, but it's really simple to set up. You just need to uh, go into this area, create a new app. Um, I'm going to go to App Registrations here. And this is the one that I created earlier, the Postman app. So I'm going to keep this one. So let's click on that. And now what I'm going to do is previously we authenticated using implicit authentication. But this time I'm going to create a client uh, certificate in secret. And we'll connect that way. Okay. So I'm going to click on this, clients and uh, certificates and secrets. And down here I'm going to click new client secret. And I'm going to give this a name. My client secret. Let's call it. Um, whatever, it's fine. Click OK. And you can see here that that gives us a, um, a new client here and then new client description here and then we have the value here which is uh, what we will use to connect. Okay, So we have that uh, ready to go. So now let's go back over to our flow and then let's look at the next step that we want to do. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do here, we'll click on new step. We're going to add an HTTP action. Okay. So if I do this, this is the one we want, HTTP premium. I'll select this. And now the method, I'm going to use a post here. And the URI is going to be this. All right. So now uh, the headers. So here is going to be content type. And we will do application uh, x w w w form like so. Okay. So remember, this step is uh, us authenticating to the service, and then from there we can go and uh, run some other web services. All right. So um, this is the first part. Now the next part is the body. So if we go into the body, we're going to type out some things here. So. We're going to use a grant type of password this time. So I'm going to do grant type is equal to password. And then let's do a new line here and I'll do and. So here's the username. Um, so I'm going to enter in my username here and we'll do another one. And let's do the password this time. And now the client ID in secret. Okay, so we're going to type in client ID here. And this is where we're going to grab this from our uh, app. So I'm going to go over back over to uh, the Postman app. And let's go back over here. And the client ID is uh, this one at the top. So I'm going to copy this, paste this into here. And then I'm going to do the client secret. Okay, like so. And I'm going to grab that from the app. If we go back over to here grab this here. Okay. So I'm going to paste this in here. And then finally, I'm going to do resource. And I'm going to type in the URL to my org. Okay. Make sure we spell that correctly. All right. So that looks good. So now I'm going to go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and run it. So if we go to test, we'll perform the trigger action, click run flow. We can go to the flow runs page, click on success. And there we go. So we get our bearer back. Okay. So that's perfect. That's what we want. So let's go ahead and copy this because we're going to use this in the next step. All right. So I'm going to hit control C on this one and let's go ahead and click edit and we'll now add a new step. And this time we're going to do a pass JSON. All right. So let's go grab this JSON here. And content we're going to put here is the body that's coming in from our response from the HTTP. And then for the schema, let's click on generate from sample. I'm going to paste in what we uh, just had copied and click done. And then now that generates the uh, schema for us based on that sample coming in. So that's going to give us the bearer token for our next step. And our next step is going to be to call out to the service to uh, grab the version that's currently in the service, all right? So I'm going to flip back over to D365 here, and let's take a look at the web API, and let's see how we can grab this, all right? So in order to grab this, um, what we'll do is let's let's do a simple example first. Uh, let's just take uh, grab accounts data from the web API, okay? 
So to, to do this, we're going to go to, uh, I'm going to add onto this API data version 9.1 and accounts. All right. So if I do this, it's going to pull back all accounts into uh, the browser, right? Cool. So I'm going to copy this and let's go back over to our flow. I'm going to create a new step and we're going to call this one. I'm going to do another HTTP here. So I'm going to grab this and the method I'm going to use uh, is going to be get this time and the URI, I'm going to paste in the URI. So we're just going to grab all accounts and now the authorization I'm going to send through as bearer and make sure I put a space after the word bearer and then I'm going to use the access token here uh, to get that uh, to send through the request. So if I save this and run this, let's just go ahead and make sure that this works. So just a simple example to get all accounts, right? So I'm going to click test, update the that, I'm going to run the flow. Let's go to the flow runs page and we can see that we get a green checkbox back and we can see this output here, right? So I click on download. Here is all the account data, right? So that succeeded. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, let's X out of this. And what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and edit this. And now I'll do the actual one. So I'm going to change this here. Um, you know what? I'm going to come over here first and let's take a look at it. So here, what we want to do is a retrieve. Let me type this again. Version. All right. So if I retrieve version here, we can see that it's giving me the version number. Okay, cool. So I'm going to copy this uh, over here and let's go back to our flow and let's just change this to use the retrieve version right so now if i save this and let's go ahead and run it make sure it works click test click run flow and if i take a look at this we get back our response right so we're getting the version in here cool um so now what i want to do i want to copy this body and let's go back and edit this and we will create a new step and we're going to pass JSON again. And now it's going to give us um, the version, right? So the content here is going to be a uh, body from HTTP2. So we're going to grab that. And then the schema, we're going to do generate from sample again, paste this in, click OK, click Save. And let's make sure that this runs properly. So we get the pass JSON, that all looks good. And I think we're good there, right? So that looks cool, uh, no errors. I'm gonna edit this. So now let's go ahead and add a condition in here. And I think what we'll do is we'll, get a, uh, we'll build this out so that we get an email if the version of this uh, is greater than or equal to the version that we want, if we wanna implement this, uh, if we wanna have this new feature available for the SQL access to the common data service, right? So let's click on new step here and we're going to add a condition in here. Okay. So I click on condition. Uh, now we can choose a value and I'm going to say select version here. So if the version that we get back from the service is greater than or equal to, right? And then let's just go and grab this version here. Okay. So we're going to copy this and let's go back to our flow over here and I'm going to paste this in here. So if the flow um, finds out that this version is greater than or equal to that, then we can do something on the yes or we can do something on the no, right? So if it is, let's, let's click add action and I'm going to do a uh, email. So I search for email and let's do a if I scroll down a little bit here, we got to send email v2. I'm going to click on this and I am going to uh, send the email to myself and I'm going to uh, set the subject as woohoo and um, I'm going to say your Power Platform version is this, okay? So that's going to be great. If I get a yes, um, I'll know that the version is uh, now available. Okay. So I'm going to 
keep that like that. And then on the no, if I click no, let's go ahead and add an email as well. Do the same kind of thing. And I'm going to send it to myself as well. And I'm going to set the subject as not yet. And I frown here, okay. Um, and then I'm going to say uh, just the same thing, really. Your Power Platform version is version. And then this time we get a frown here, all right. So let's go ahead and save this. So that's it. Uh, I've saved it. Let's go ahead and test it. I'm going to click test, test, save and test. All right, and click run flow and done. And now let's go ahead and check if this ran. So we'll go over to, so now we see that the flow has run successfully. And uh, if we click on condition, we actually see that uh, it did go into the no area here. Um, and now let's go ahead and check our email. So if we click on this email, we see that it says your Power Platform version is that, and so it's not at the version that we want it to be at, but we're going to get this email every day and it's just going to tell us, right? And then one day we're going to log in and we're going to have the latest uh, version that we um, that's going to allow us to do all the cool stuff that we can't wait to do, right? So if I go back into our flow and, you know, if we just made this version something really low, um, like this, right? Let's just try running this and see, because we know that we're higher than this version. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and let's run it and make sure that we get into the yes to see if this actually works on this side. So that's saved. Let's go ahead and test this. So now if we go into the condition, we can see that uh, it was a yes here on this side. And if we go back to our email, we can see that the um, we now get a woohoo and uh, we get this message here. So that's it. That's how you use uh, Power Automate to check for you which version of the Power Platform you're on and then you don't have to keep going in and checking it. Um, and then you'll get that email every day and you can uh, wait for uh, those new features to come out. Hope you enjoyed. So that's it guys. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel and of course check out my blog at carldesouza.com. Thank you.